This week on Maker Update, real big, real neon, a Pi camera with autofocus, bending cathode rays, and a typewriter that writes back. Hey everybody, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another Maker Update. I hope you're all doing well and gearing up for a creative and productive year. I have a great show for you. Let's get started with the project of the week. Wesley Treat dropped in on Jimmy DeResta's workshop and, with some help from Jimmy, created this big, beautiful neon sign that will hang out front. Not only do we get to see the whole project unfold in a video on Wesley's channel, but we also get to see a different perspective from Jimmy DeResta on his channel. I've included links to both videos down in the description. The sign is made using a combination of a steel inner frame, which was Jimmy's contribution, and an aluminum sheet metal exterior, which was the bulk of the work. We get to see Wesley outline, cut, bend, rivet, and paint the entire thing, and because he's using real incandescent lights and neon, we get to see all the fixtures and wiring that goes into something like this. As a spectator, there are tons of little tips to glean from the project. I thought it was particularly cool how Wesley gave the aluminum sign some real rust by applying an iron paint in strategic locations, then sealing those up with tape, applying the main coat of paint, peeling up the tape, and then accelerating the rust effect with some vinegar and peroxide. It's an ambitious project, but man, what a payoff. And such a cool mix of techniques and skills at work here. Definitely worth a watch, and I think it's great that we get to see the project from two perspectives. Now for some news, two announcements from Raspberry Pi. The first is an all new camera module, or actually a new series of them, called Camera Module 3. Like previous generations, these connect up to a Raspberry Pi computer board using a thin ribbon cable, giving your projects the ability to see, take photos, and record video. There are four flavors of the camera to choose between, standard, wide angle, infrared sensitive for night vision applications, and a wide angle version of the IR sensitive module. Pricing is $25 to $35 depending on the version you pick, and all of them are available now. Two features make this update notable. The first is a new autofocus capability. All the previous versions had a fixed focus lens, so without any modifications, these new cameras will behave much more like your smartphone camera. These can also shoot in high dynamic range. Again, like most modern smartphones, the HDR mode will shoot multiple exposures and composite them for a more even tone and better detail. You can find more information using the included link. One smaller announcement that came out during the past week is a confirmation that Raspberry Pi plans to add support for Bluetooth to the Raspberry Pi Pico W. The popular $6 microcontroller board has been shipping since June of last year with built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capability at a hardware level. The expectation was that they would eventually enable this Bluetooth capability with a software update and it looks like that support may be here sometime this month. More projects. Deflectron is an interactive installation by Nicholas Roy that arranges 15 small CRT TVs in a way that people can manipulate them using magnets. The TVs display a live feed from cameras embedded in the custom table he created. So you're looking at a video feed of yourself on the screen and then warping it using a selection of magnets that are tethered above each TV. There's some 3D printing involved to mount all the components, but for the most part, I'd call this a wonderfully analog project. It also includes some great documentation on his website, which I've linked to in the description. For a project that blurs the extremes of analog and digital, check out Ghostwriter by Arvind Sanjeev. He took an old electromechanical word processor and turned it into an open AI GPT-3 interface for prompting stories written by artificial intelligence. On his blog, he details how he used an Arduino to decode and remap the original keyboard so that he could use it with a Raspberry Pi computer. The Pi then runs the OpenAI Python API for GPT-3 and sends responses back to the Arduino to get typed out. The two dials added to the top of the typewriter control the AI, limiting the creativity and length of the response. The screen between them displays the values set by the dials, along with a little ghost sprite just for fun. Not only is this a fascinating idea, but I also really like the design choices Arvin made here. It's a very tasteful makeover. I also think that, at least for this show, this points to some new project territory. We've covered a number of projects that tap into machine learning to solve a problem, but 
folding in AI and AI chat and these creative generative tools that are springing up, I'm really interested to see where this all leads. Now for some tips and tools. So as I was obsessively watching Wesley Treat's video on making that neon sign, I noticed the tool he was using to cut out little triangles from the sheet metal, allowing him to bend back sections that would get riveted in place. How many times have you come across tools like these where there's seemingly no way to find more information on them until you know the specific name of that tool? It's like the Rumpelstiltskin effect. After some trial and error, I eventually tracked these down as V-notchers or duct notchers, and I left a link to a Klein Tools version down in the description that looks similar to what Wesley's using. I'm not sure if I need them, but I definitely feel better knowing what they're called. Another good to know tool, this one is online and free, is the OLED Breakout Font Converter by Daniel Eichhorn. If you wanna put text on one of those little OLED screens like the one used in the Ghostwriter project, this tool will help you dial in the size and style until you're happy with the results. And by way of Hendrik Vogelpohl, I learned about this technique of embossing sheet metal using a sandwich of 3D printed molds. The thread linked in the description showcases a few variations of this technique for large and small scale embossing. It could be fun to try on your next project. In this week's DigiKey Spotlight, there's a new video up explaining the basics of capacitors. You get a look inside a common electrolytic capacitor and a general understanding of how these things absorb, store, and release a charge, along with some typical applications you'll find them in. All right, and that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment. I'm curious to know if there was ever a tool that you struggled to learn the name of. Big thanks as always to DigiKey for making the show possible, and thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.